Hi everyone, it's Sue Plum here to share my latest scrapbooking process video with you. Uh, today's page I'm sharing with you was created for Colour Blast using a colour spray, colour paste and colour artist inks. So for today's page I decided to document a photo of one of my best scrapbooking friends and I that was taken at a retreat earlier this year. So I started my page with a sheet of basil marshmallow cardstock. I prefer using basil marshmallow because it can handle the wet media so much better than a normal weight cardstock. So I took the colour spray, which was actually indigo, and the reason I chose the indigo was because it actually matched the colour highlights that I had in my hair at the time. So I tipped it into a disposable cup and I just used a wide number four brush to brush it over my background and then I dried it off with a heat gun. Then I took some white acrylic paint and mixed in a little bit of the Colorado sinks. I actually used lime and grass there and I just added a few drops of each and just blended it until I got a color that I was happy with. And I then went in with a brayer and layered some of that acrylic paint over the color spray that I had brushed onto my background just to give it a couple of contrasting colors and tie in with the colors that were in the photo. Next I went in with my Colour Artist ink and I added some of the lime ink to my background just using the dropper straight from the bottle. I dropped a few drops over the top of the page and then I just tilted the page around just to help it run randomly around the place. There was no method to this. I then dried it off with a heat gun. It wasn't quite dry so I just dabbed at it with a little bit of paper towel before I dried it off again with a heat gun. The next step in my process was I wanted to add some stamping to my background just to give it an extra layer and give my page background a bit more depth. I used this floral stamp from Viva Las Vegas Stamps and it's just an unmounted rubber stamp. I buy all my stamps unmounted from Viva Las Vegas Stamps as I prefer to keep them unmounted as it allows me to sort of bend them when I apply them to the page. So I used that stamp and stamped it repeatedly around the page just to sort of set the focal area for where my photo was going to go. You can see that close up there. Next I went in with the Colour Blast Colour Paste. This is just blue, this one. It's a beautiful blue, I love it. And I'm just using a stencil there from the Crafters Workshop, which I believe is called Mini Chickadoodle. It's got all sorts of doodled little flowers on it and there was just one section of the stencil that I was using which I repeated three times around my page. So I just applied it with the palette knife. You can see that I've left that foil seal intact under the lid of my colour paste and that's just to help the product stop from drying out. So I went in after I'd applied the colour paste, dried it off with a bit with a heat gun. I tend to be incredibly impatient when it comes to drying things and on this day I was actually quite patient and hit it quite a bit with a heat gun so apologies if you got a bit bored then. So I set my page aside and oh, I just popped a little bit of scrap cardboard onto the back of my photo there. I usually apply cardboard to the back of the photos just to pop them up a bit from the page. So once I had the cardboard on the back of the photo, it was time to create some layers for my photo mat. So the papers I'm using here were all from Coco Vanilla Studio. There were some from the Bohemian Dream collection and also some pieces from the Boys Rule collection. And I just looked for some pieces that had the, the shades that I was looking for. There's some greens, there's some blues, there's some indigo, just to tie it all together. So I cut them and tore them into various size pieces, stacked them all together and secured them with my long arm stapler. Now my long arm stapler was not actually behaving very nicely on this day. Um, my hubby said that apparently I'd gone a little bit too hard and whacked it and it was starting to jam up a bit. So you can see that I switched to the smaller one there and I was having to actually push down the ends of the staples with the tips of my scissors. Um, the good news is hubby has since fixed my long arm stapler because we know how much I love it and it's all working again fine. So once I stacked up all of those papery layers, I secured them down onto the page 
just in the focal area there. And you can see how I've left the color paste just peeking out from behind the paper. The next step was I went in with these beautiful cut files that come from Cut To You, created by Gwen. So these floral cut files, um, I actually purchased digitally, but I also had Gwen cut me some because despite the fact that I have a silhouette, Gwen, you'll know this, my silhouette and I are not the greatest of friends and it's also quite a hassle for me to get it out and set it up when I wanna use it. So for convenience sake, I also had Gwen cut some for me and send them to me. Well, actually she delivered them to me at retreat so that I could use them straight away without having to drag out my machine. So I left the cut files white because I wanted them to contrast against the colors that I had on the background. And I chose not to back them at all because I wanted the patterns and the colors and the stamping and everything showing through. So I tucked them in around where my photo was going to go and just used a little bit of the Scotch tacky glue in my fine line bottle to attach them to the page. But I didn't attach them all the way because I wanted to bend up the edges of them just to give the page some dimension. So once I had those beautiful cut files in place, I then went in with my signature frayed gauze. I, I love the texture, the soft texture that gauze brings to the page and it just adds another element to the layers. So I went in with the gauze and you'll, you'll see very shortly me getting annoyed with my long arm stapler. And in the end, I ended up using some Helmer 450 to attach the gauze down onto the page. Naughty, naughty stapler. So once the gauze was in place, I then popped the photo down on top, again using my Helmer 450 adhesive. There we go, beautiful. I also actually bent up the corners of the photo slightly. Now for my title, I'm actually using one of the cardstock titles from Coco Vanilla Studio from the brand new Midnight Collection. And I attached my title along the bottom edge of my photo there. And again, you can see I'm just bending it up slightly just to give it a bit of extra dimension. Now for something different today, I delved into my stash and pulled out a heap of paper flowers. Um, I used to use flowers quite a bit on my pages but I haven't for quite some time. Now, all of these flowers that I have came from Delish Scraps, and I will pop the link to Del Delish Scraps down below so that you can go and visit the store. Um, Amanda has a fabulous range of flowers in store. If you love flowers, I would highly recommend you go and check her out. So I thought it was time to dust off the flowers, dust off the leaves, and create a page where I could use some of them up. So this bit's going to be a little bit boring for you because I went in attaching flowers, attaching leaves, attaching more flowers. Um, I'll explain a little bit of my method when I do work with dimensional paper flowers. I always start with the largest flowers first. So there were two larger sized flowers there. So I went about attaching them to my page first before I went in with leaves and the smaller flowers. You'll find it a lot easier to balance your page if you start with those larger size flowers and then just fill in the gaps with the leaves and with the smaller ones. Uh, I find if you work in the reverse order, it's too hard to create balance. So you can see that I stuck with adding the flowers to the bottom half of the layout. I did look at putting some up a little bit higher, but I didn't want my page to become unbalanced. So I stuck with adding the flowers just below the photo and to the sides of the photo. So in I'm going with lots of paper flowers, lots of paper leaves. And again, I'm attaching them with the Helmer 450 adhesive. Uh, the other way I would normally attach flowers is using a hot glue gun. But when I do use my hot glue gun, I tend to have to stand over at my kitchen bench because it's got a relatively short cord on it. So for the sake of creating this video, I just stuck with the Helmer's glue instead. So once I had all of my flowers in place, I was looking at the colors on my page and I decided I needed to bring a bit of warmth to the page. Now, I didn't really wanna go adding a, a warm tone as such, like a red or a yellow or an orange. And I wanted to stick with something that was fairly natural looking. So I went with a wood grain. 
Now you can see here, I am adding some washi tape. Now the way I store my washi tapes is I actually use small plastic rulers that I got from Officeworks and you can thank my sister Mandy for this tip. And I wind off a couple of meters of my washi tapes or my favorites onto these rulers and I keep them in a little, little pencil case. Um, it just makes it a lot easier when I'm going to retreats or if I'm going to my sister's house or just generally for making them accessible because I can have a whole lot of washi tapes stored in one small pencil case. And then when one runs out, I simply refill it from the roll that I'm keeping in the cupboard. So I went in with a little bit of the torn strips of the wood grain washi tape. And then I went in with some wood veneer pieces, which are from Coco Vanilla Studio. And these were actually from the Sugar and Spice collection, which was one of Coco Vanilla Studio's debut collections back in 2015. So yes, I have been hoarding these in my stash. So it was time for them to get used up. Lots of little flowers, a little arrow there. Um, there's some hearts that I used and I just attached those on with a liquid adhesive. So I was happy with the warmth that the wood tone brought to the page, but once I looked at it, it looked not flat, but I felt that it needed something else. So I, oh, here I was looking at using a little woody also from Coco Vanilla Studio, but I, I just couldn't find the right place for it. So I discarded that one to the side. So as I said, I was looking for something extra to bring to the page and I hadn't planned on using this, but I ended up pulling out my Color Blast Color Shimmer Brush Marker. Now these pens have got a beautiful shimmer in them. The one that I use is a clear, so it's a clear base and it just has a clear sparkle in it. And I used it to apply to the flowers. I also applied it to the tips of the cut files that I'd used. These come in, also come in gold and silver, and they're a great addition for being able to add a little bit of sparkle to elements on your page. Now the little frays, well they're not stickers, they're not self-adhesive, but they're called snippets. They were from Coco Vanilla Studios Color Me Happy collection. And as I said, I'm in a bit of stash busting mode, and so I pulled those out because it gave me a chance to use a few of them up. Now to finish off, I'm going in with another color artist ink. This is Soot, which is the black one, and no page is complete without splatter for me. So I just go in with a fine tip brush, dip it straight into the bottle, and then just tap it to put some fine splatters around my page. And now you can see I'm finishing off with that color shimmer brush marker in clear. And at the end, I'll pop some close-ups so you can see the shimmer in the photos. I'll also pop links below to all of the products that I've used today so you can visit them and see them for yourself. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.